Good afternoon, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming up to Citrus County today to talk to us about the latest results from one of our Internet Crimes Against Children operations. For the purposes of this operation, we labeled it Operation Cyber Spring Sting, and it resulted in the arrest of 15 individuals with two who were rearrested once they were in jail on additional charges. And ultimately, we had 60 different counts against these 15 individuals. I'm extremely proud of the diligent efforts of my team of detectives, the patrol deputies, the folks that we have working crime intelligence analysis, and of course, the rest of the team that's out there from our communications officers, our deputies out on patrol, and the remaining folks across the agency who work behind the scenes diligently for many, many long hours, way until the early morning hours of the morning, trying to get some of these most dangerous people off the streets of the state of Florida and certainly off the streets of Citrus County. Now, during this operation, some of our law enforcement officers posed as minors, and they got onto various sites on the Internet or on some of the smartphone apps that are out there and chatted with individuals who clearly identified themselves as adults attempting to have improper relations with children, often involving sexual acts that were very explicit in their descriptions. And despite acknowledging the child's age, these disgusting human beings, in the case of seven individuals out of the 15 you see pictured here, traveled to Citrus County to attempt to have sex with an underage child. Some went as far as traveling several hours away to come to this county and attempt to have sex with an underage child. And out of the 15 uh, arrested, as I mentioned earlier, seven traveled to meet a minor. And I want to show you some photos of those folks and identify them uh, for you. We've got their photos here on this one graphic uh, that's blown up for you so you can see them up close and personal. John Barretla, Jr., 65 years old, out of Brooksville, Florida. He traveled to seduce or solicit child, a child in a sex act and he transmitted harmful material to a minor. He has a criminal history of simple battery, domestic battery, and un unlawfully using slugs to obtain a, a purchase. Freddie Betancourt Reyes came out of Tampa, almost two hours drive from where we're standing right now. He traveled to seduce a child or solicit a child in a sex act. And he's also charged with three counts of transmission of harmful material to a minor and solicitation of a minor. He has a criminal history of domestic battery and driving without a driver's license. Kaimani Bryan, a 22-year-old out of Ocala. He traveled to seduce or solicit uh, a child for a sex act, and he also used a two-way communications device unlawfully to uh, entertain uh, this meetup with a child. Mitchell Carter, 32-year-olds out of Dunallen. He traveled as well. He has, has also been charged with eight counts of possession of child pornography and unlawful use of a two-way communications device. John Hughes, Jr., a 40-year-old from Hernando. He traveled to seduce a child or solicit a child uh, in a sex act, and he also used a two-way communication device. Jose Santana. A 29-year-old from Sefner traveled to seduce a child or have uh, solicit a child in a sex act. He's charged with four counts of transmission of harmful material to a minor. Last but not least, Joseph Sysol, a 37-year-old from Brooksville, who happened to be, at the time of this operation, an on-duty federal corrections officer who later traveled to Citrus County to, to seduce or solicit a child in a sex act. And after we arrested him, we had the opportunity to go through his phone and he was additionally charged with 12 counts of possession of child pornography and transmission of harmful material uh, to a minor. Now some of these folks have bonded out and they're out back there on the street right now. So I want you to take a good look at who these people are because they're back out there awaiting trial and they can reoffend before they ever make it into a courtroom and have the opportunity to tell their story to a judge or to a judge and a jury.
And folks like this that have engaged in this type of disgusting behavior have no place in Citrus County, the state of Florida, or anywhere else in the United States of America. And this is the third year in a row where we've gone out and put increasing efforts behind raising awareness, but more importantly, getting dangerous people off of the streets of Citrus County and off of the roads here in Florida so that they cannot offend against these very innocent and unsuspecting young children, boys and girls, who could be very seriously harmed and in some cases never make it back home to their family members after they have illicit sex with some of the folks that are soliciting sex acts with them. I'd be remiss if I didn't think all of the partners that were out there are in total about 75 folks involved in this operation over the course of five days. And the United States Secret Service did some heavy lifting for us along with the Fifth Judicial Circuit State Attorney's Office. State Attorney Bill Glatzing couldn't be here with us today. He had a, an engagement to be out of town at and he couldn't make it. Uh, the Hernando County Sheriff's Office had their entire team up here working shoulder to shoulder with our Internet Crimes Against Children uh, team in the Citrus County Sheriff's Office. The Tavares Police Department had folks here. And then there were some other partners from around the state, like the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well. With that, uh, I'd be uh, open it up to any questions now, if anybody has any questions. Uh, Sheriff, what do you say to parents out there whose kids might be using these apps about who else clearly might be on these apps as well? well you know, the, the big message for parents is to be into everything that their children are doing. Know what your children are doing, especially when they're on a cell phone, a, a tablet, or on a computer, or on a gaming console. In the past, we've, we've talked about some of the most dangerous apps that are out there, and clearly that message is just for that point in time, and it's really about knowing the totality of the things that your children are doing. Until they're an adult and they're 18 and they're responsible for their own behavior and their own safety and welfare, it's really incumbent upon parents to drill into these smartphone apps that are out there, the websites that are out there, and especially know what's on these gaming consoles that children are playing games on because anything that has a chat function can be used and exploited and a children is a child is always going to be vulnerable and it's, it's the best the best practices to know what your children are doing and have serious conversations with your children about the consequences of what could happen to them and how they if they chat with somebody like this the high, there's a high likelihood that that's a very dangerous person with intentions to harm them. Uh, are there particular apps you're willing to explain, you know, that you were using and you know, which ones were frequently used as part of this? But what there, there's here, here's the deal, and we've talked about it for a couple of years now about the, and we identify those apps. If we identify those apps, there's probably a hundred more either out there that are dangerous right now or there's another dozen or so that could be opening up today, right now, as we're having this uh, news conference and talking about this operation. There are a plethora of other things that are out there that are too numerous to try and, and nail is it, down. Is it fair to say that these are commonly used apps? Most of them are commonly used, but there are some obscure ones out there that will pop up like this that just get created. And they may have had the, the purest, most innocent means when they were creating the app. But as long as it's got that chat function that's out there so that the children can text back and forth with somebody, that can be exploited. And then once that, that exploitation starts, you never know what path that uh, conversation is going to go down. And then they'll get them off of that device and onto some other means of communication. And that's where the slippery slope begins. And it, it's awful hard to uh, maintain that child's safety after that. Some of these people clearly look distraught, upset. I think they're a hundred percent. They're all upset that they got caught. Uh, I was at a couple of the takedowns uh, that we did over the course of this operation, and we waited for several hours on this suspect to show up. And when he did, he profusely denied everything, and he was just shocked beyond all description about what was happening and why he was under arrest. And this guy's 60 some odd years old. He traveled from about an hour away to come and have sex with an underage girl. And we took him down, 
And then as, as you, you drill into the things with people like this, every one of these people knowingly and willingly went above and beyond and did wrong. They absolutely knew it was wrong. And in some of the confessions that we got out of these people after talking to them, it was, it was just, it was, you, the, your senses would be completely shocked. And, and a couple of these other ones here, that the look of denial and everything, I was there when we took Kamani Bryan down too. And Kamani Bryan absolutely had no ownership of what he had done but he knew he'd been caught red-handed. Because we his device was there in the car and he was in total shock that he was getting arrested for, for these particular charges. Did any of them have jobs that they worked with children? Uh, that I don't know. We can find that out for you and let you know. We, I don't believe any of them had jobs working with children because uh, it would have come up as we were working them and uh, we would have quickly alerted some folks uh, about that. The one, you know, this guy, on duty, as a federal correction, a high-ranking federal corrections officer at that, on duty, instead of paying attention to what he was supposed to be doing with an inmate that he was on duty guarding, he was chatting with what he thought was a, a child, and he was setting up a meet to come and have sex with that child. And then he had disgusting pornographic images of very young children on his cell phone. Things that a normal human being sees one time in their life and they're disgusted for the rest of their life about something like this. Multiple images. And there's no telling what else he had been engaged in over the course of his lifetime. So what you'll see is uh, in the video is the team that worked right over here on the other side of this wall for many hours into the, actually starting in the afternoon uh, for the schedule, but we started doing this stuff weeks earlier and engaging in these conversations to start setting up the operation. And we also did some training to bring in some other folks that wanted to learn how we do this and harvest some of the best practices so that they could go out and set themselves up to do it. So. You'll see some of the video that shows our folks in here, the detectives and the folks that are having these conversations with these disgusting individuals. And as they're, they're working their way through that, there are teams working throughout the county doing surveillance to ensure that we are clearly identifying these people when we're about to go and take them down. We're looking for the vehicle that's registered them. We're looking for the type of things that would clearly identify this individual as the suspect we're about to take down. And then we, we, we've got uh, the teams, uh, we've got plenty of video of the takedowns of these individuals too. We'll see the takedowns. You'll see some of the takedowns as well. Uh, Sheriff, we have these 15 suspects here, Sean, but what's your message to other people out there who may have the thought of doing something like this to a, a child in, this, in your county? You better find another place to go and do stuff like this because we're going to get you. And I'll tell you an example of this. And I, I, I wish she was here today, uh, but she had a prearranged uh, event where she couldn't be here today. Sergeant Tiffany Berry is our sergeant in charge of this particular unit in the sheriff's office. She works for Lieutenant Matt Baird and Captain John Novi, And she is determined to protect the innocent children. She's a mother herself and she's determined to protect innocent children from sick, disgusting people like this. And on the eve of Hurricane Adelia threatening our community, thankfully bypassing us except for the storm surge that we got uh, the next day after it was uh, already made its landfall. On the eve of Hurricane Adelia, last August, passing by us heading north towards Big Bend, two people that we had talked to through one of these uh, cyber operations back in the spring of last year, came back up and solicited sex with an underage girl. And Sergeant Barry led her team through the process. We met up with these two disgusting, a man and a woman, these two disgusting human beings, and we took them down and arrested them while we were preparing for a potential Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane 
to make landfall here at Citrus County uh, and you know bring all of that uh, havoc and destruction to our community. So we're, we're ever vigilant to protect the citizens of our community, but especially those young vulnerable children that don't know enough about the world and don't know enough to have the, the sense of protecting themselves. That's why we're there, to protect the children. And it, you know, these, these unfortunate cases like this, um, they happen far too often. There are literally many, many hundreds of children across the state of Florida every single day that fall victim to people doing this very same thing. And it's thankful for our team of detectives to work alongside of our partners at the state level, all across all of the other uh, 66 counties, uh, sheriff's offices, and as well uh, to have federal partners like the U.S. Secret Service. But here's the other thing that I think is an important message. We have a very good team that processes these individuals, and not only do we make arrests, we get convictions. And we get the type of convictions that send a clear message. You try that someplace else. Don't bring it to Citrus County because you're going to go to jail for a very long time. And our detectives do bulletproof cases that make sure that the state attorney can fully prosecute whoever we arrest to the fullest extent of the law, and they serve a long, long time in jail, and they don't just walk out one day, and then they don't have to face the consequences of these te terrible deeds that they've attempted to do to some of the children. So the other message I would say is, if you suspect someone is a victim of a crime like this, please never hesitate to pick up the phone and notify your local law enforcement. We are here to serve and protect our citizens, but we can't do a thing about it if we don't know about it. But if we do know something about it, our detectives are relentless in pursuing the truth to make sure that we get somebody arrested and get them off the streets so they can do no further harm to the children in our community. The uh, video shows A place what? That you lure these suspects to. Well, we didn't lure them to <laughs> the place. We we set up meets in different locations around the community, and we picked a place that was for both the safety of the citizens but also the safety of our officers so that we could do what we need to do as a law enforcement team uh, so that that person uh, does not flee either on foot or by way of a vehicle uh, to get out and go somewhere else to type, uh, try and offend uh, in a situation like this in some other community. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Have a blessed day.